I was vegetarian for about 10 years when I, I couldn't get hold of a good quality meat that had been farmed to high standards and killed properly. I don't have a problem with eating animals. I have a big problem with the way that we look after animals and animal welfare. Um, at home where I live, I have some sheep. Uh, we look at, they, they have great lives, but I eat them. <laughs> I have some chickens, they have great lives, but <laughs> the time comes. And also I eat their eggs. But so I don't eat much meat. Maybe I eat meat once, always once a week, sometimes twice a week, but not more. So again, it's a question of how much meat do we need to eat? You know, we all know capitalism depends on consuming and consuming starts with food. You know, that's why everybody's so fat. They just eat too much. You know, we could eat a little bit less. We could consume a little bit less. And so, you know, when I talk about food as political, yes, it's about how, how did this get to my plate? But it's also, why is my fridge just full of food that I'm going to throw away? I buy it on a Monday and I throw it away on a Friday. You know, we know that about a third of food in the West is thrown away. Things like that we have to stop. You know, we have to, it's a, it is about being conscious. It's about, and if in schools, for instance, every child was educated about food, about how it happens, uh, what it costs the earth, what it costs the If children knew straight away, then they could make decisions. You know, they don't have to wait till they're 16 or 18 to learn about how the world actually works. We should teach it in schools. And the reason we don't is because people say, oh no, that's politics. But everything is politics. But, you know, people say, oh, I'm not political. I think, you are. You have just said you're not going to do anything about the world. That is a political choice. Um, so, of course, it's political. The thing with reading is that at, at present, there is no CCTV inside anybody's head. So when you read a book, I read a book, it is absolutely private. And um, we're in a dialogue, a conversation. Things are happening, things are changing. It looks like, you know, what are we doing? We're just sitting there reading a book, but it is exploding in your head and they can't control that. <laughs> I love that. Um, of course it will change, but when we read a book, it is extending and expanding who we are and what we know. It's not simply knowledge as in information. It's not, oh, I read a book about the Roman Empire. Now I know everything about the Roman Empire. That's information. The thing with fiction, with poetry, with philosophy, with political essays is it's more than information. It's giving us a way of thinking about the world. Um, it's making our brain sharper, smarter. You know, it's not just data. Um, which is also important as everything in the world is being reduced to or turned into data. You know, data is the new gold, it's the new oil. Everything that can be known about us is being known by the big companies and we should try perhaps not to let that happen. You know, some days I just leave my phone at home just to annoy them <laughs> so they can't find me. Um, as you know, Mark Zuckerberg is, is, is la launching a new cryptocurrency. Um, called Libra, which is meant to be free, but nothing about Facebook or Mark Zuckerberg is free. Um, this will be a cryptocurrency backed by actual money. So it can't collapse like Bitcoin. It's not going to go like this. It's not dependent um, on an internal value. It will have an external value. Which, so it will be the first stable cryptocurrency. China wants to adopt this currency because China would like to have no more cash transactions because once you have a cryptocurrency, you can control everything. And you think how quickly machines process data. A machine could process every crypto transaction happening in Barcelona today. Now, most of it, who cares? I give you, know, give you 10 euros, you give me 10 euros, who cares? But if I do that with a coin or a note, nobody knows. If, it's, if I do it from my phone, if they want to know, they can know. So this is also about data. It means that all of our lives will be watched. It's Big Brother, you know, and that's where, where we're heading. And 
People do want privacy, I think, not because they're criminals or because they're sleeping with their neighbor's wife. Or people want privacy because we just like to be anonymous sometimes. We like to walk down the street, do what we want to do without anybody knowing about it. That is nearly over. That's nearly disappeared. And once we are all forced to use uh, cryptocurrencies, which, we, which will happen certainly in your, soon, 10 years, I think, maximum, then everything about our lives belongs to somebody else. I hate that. I was 18 when I was able to vote for the first time in my country. And Margaret Thatcher was a woman, never seen that before, uh, as a prime minister. And I thought, that's good. Um, she'll have she, she'll understand women. She will be she will move things forward for women. She didn't, of course, but I thought that she would. Um, you know, just because somebody's a woman doesn't mean that they they have values which support women. You know, she absolutely supported values for men. You know, she was that's who she was, and she was not liberal in any sense. But I didn't know that, so I thought, okay, I'll take a chance with her. Um, but you know. After the Second World War in 1945, all of Europe, um, whether it was the Allies uh, or the Fascists in Italy and Germany, we came together to say, all right, how do we build a better world? You know, Germany wanted to rebuild uh, with some sort of socialist conscience. You know, Germany had taken full responsibility for what had happened in the war. Um, it was going to be a different landscape. You know, we had health service in Britain. That's the beginning of workers' rights. We nationalized industries like the railways um, and the water companies, the electricity companies. It was meant to be a world for everybody. People had fought in the war, risked their lives all over Europe. So we were going to do something different. That lasted from 1945 to the mid-70s. Um, and then things start to change. And it's at that point you get the thatcher Reagan neoliberal project coming in, which has been amazingly successful if what you're interested in is money. Because in a globalized world where finance is deregulated, money can go anywhere. People can't, you know, a human being can't go anywhere, but a dollar can go everywhere. And that is what the right likes. It likes money to move around freely with no controls, and it likes people to be really controlled. Either you control them through economic power, so they don't have enough, or you control them by giving them so much money that they want the situation to stay exactly as it is. But it's all about control over people and complete freedom for money. For me, it should be the other way around. People should be free. Money should be controlled. But it is popular. And the right is good at getting across a single message. And people, you know, we talked about they're frightened. So, at the moment now, I see a real chance for the world. Either things could change and get better, we could, we could start something different, or the world could get a lot worse. But why are we even talking about this? Because we've got climate breakdown, and maybe we have 12 years, and then it doesn't matter what anybody's politics are, <laughs> because there won't be a planet. I mean, that is how stupid our world is now. Uh, we argue about, you know, Brexit, it's a vanity project. You know, here we are. The world, the one single world that we all have is under such threat and we're doing Brexit. What is the fucking matter with us? <laughs> Pardon me. Brexit is shit. And I don't know what will be on the other side of this. No one does. Um, that is the stupidity of Brexit. We, know, we all know what it's like to be in the European Union. Nobody knows what it's going to be like outside of the European Union. Um, it's impossible. Look, my country, like your country, is moving to the right uh, and to uh, the right which is repressive, only interested in money and power, uh, wants to control its citizens. That's frightening and it's dangerous. And look, you were young, but in my lifetime, I didn't think this would happen. I thought we were moving towards progress. And also this affects the artists. Uh, it affects what artists can say, um, what platforms they can find for their work. And at a very basic level, you know, what the right wing does is squeeze the artists out of a place. Maybe they can't afford to live here. 
you know, maybe there are no longer any funds for their work. Uh, it's very easy to get rid of protest uh, simply by making it impossible for people to live and work in a place. Um, and that, to me, that's what's happening now. And it is part of, you know, the craziness of Airbnb, the Disneyfication of the world. Everyone says, oh yeah, tourism is great. But if real people can't afford to live and work in a place, then that place becomes very easy for right-wing forces to control because it doesn't belong to anyone anymore. It's just a tourist center. Um, and you and me get pushed out. So do I fear for the future? I do. And I think everybody who has different values will have to try and come together. You know, the left is really bad at coming together for a cause, um, but the left is going to have to mobilize. And that's going to be women alongside men. It's going to be people of color, uh, trans people, everyone come together and say, we don't want the way the right wing wants this. Look, globalism and capitalism, late capitalism, has made the world very unstable. Many people don't have enough money. They don't. It's this question of they can't afford somewhere to live. They need three jobs in order to pay for something. They see their children's lives being worse than their own lives, which is not supposed to happen. Everybody thought my child's life will be better than my life. They go to a good school. They get a better job. I work hard. It's, it's going in the right direction. Once that changes, it's easy for someone who says, I'm the strong man, I will put this right for you, to come and get power. You know, it, when, when people are frightened, they'll, they'll say, okay, yeah, maybe you sort it out. You don't do everything I like, but maybe you sort out my problems. Um, and that's how the right gains control. It's exactly how Hitler and Mussolini got control. Look, it's how Franco got control. Um, we've seen enough of the right in the 20th century to know how they get control. It's what Viktor Orban is doing in Hungary. And it's frightening, it's all over the world. You know, you have a complete idiot like Donald Trump in the White House, a man of such stupidity. Um, and, and also a man who is evil, I think, who wants to destroy the America and the American dream that everybody takes for granted. So that's what I mean about on the left, we have to put aside our differences and just join together and say, we fight this. You know, the, for me, this isn't just the right, this is fascism that's coming back. And it doesn't matter if we disagree on the left. You know, when fascism is at your door, you have to fight it.